Next, we need to obtain some soil information. Soil data will give us information about the subsurface conditions. Subsurface conditions tell us what we can and cannot potentially develop. Development can include, but is not limited to, structures or the ability to sustain plant or human life. There are several places where we can obtain soil information. The most popular place is the Web Soil Survey website. So up here we can go to websoilsurvey.nrcs.usda.gov which should bring up this page here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through how to use this website. So the first thing we do once we hit the website is we hit this green button. And I'm just going to make the window bigger. And we can see an aerial of the United States here. It's still trying to draw it. The website can be a little bit slow since it's doing everything over the web. So the first thing that we need to do is to define our area of interest. And right now the default tool that we have turned on is the zoom in tool. And we're in the area of interest tab. So I already said that our site was located in northeastern Kansas. So I'm just going to zoom in there. And it's located near Manhattan, kind of west of Wamego. So this is the dammed area with the Tuttle Creek. So I'm going to zoom in this area here. And we're a lot closer now. And this is the city of Manhattan down here. So somewhere around here, around the northeastern area, is our site. So I'm going to zoom in some more. And this area up here, this appears to be our site. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in some more here. Alright, so this is probably as good as we're going to get. And what I'm going to do now is use the area of interest tool. And I'm just going to use this one here. Just kind of trace out the client thinks is the site boundary. So I'm just going to single click here and release my mouse. Single click here, release my mouse. And then I'm going to come up to probably right about here, single click and release my mouse and right about here somewhere single click release my mouse and then come up to here single click release my mouse and just kind of trace this edge here doesn't need to be uber exact and then when I'm done I'm going to double click the last one to finish the sketch and now it's creating the area of interest once our area of interest is defined, this is what it will look like. The area that we define will be hatched in. So up here towards the top, we have Soil Data Explorer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It takes a little while to refresh. We see some sub-tabs here. It says Intro to Soil, Suitabilities and Limitations for Use. Soil properties and quantities, ecological site assessment, soil reports. So you can pretty much click on any one of these. So I'll just click on this one. And we will go to soil physical properties and expand that. And we're just going to just kind of look through this list here to see what all is here. I'll go soil suitabilities and limitations building development. So we see all of these categories here. It 
This is actually very, very useful to have. You go back to the soil properties. And I'm just going to click on depth to any soil restrictive layer. And let's just say that we want our map to reflect the depth to any restrictive layers. So over here I'm going to check in detail description and then click view rating. So it's going to update our map up here. So we have a dark blue area a yellow area and kind of a blue greenish area. And then everything has a number, so 4530 is this yellow area. So depth to any restrictive layer is 89 centimeters. And then 4625 is that blue green area. And then greater than 200 centimeters is 4673, which is this dark blue area here. So this is a quick way to kind of take a look at your soils data. If we go to soils report, actually if we go to the shopping cart up here, not all of the soils are free, but some of them are, and you can purchase them. For our demonstration site, we're not actually going to purchase any soils because Remember what I said before, we always want to try to use what our company has already downloaded. So our company has already downloaded a lot of soil data, so we're going to use that data instead. So what we have here is soils data for the entire county of Riley, which is what our company has on the server. So I grabbed a copy of that and just extracted it here. The next thing I'm going to do is go to ArcMap, and I'm going to add that to my data frame. I'm going to make sure that there's nothing missing or any kind of problems with the data. Go to my source. I created a folder called USDA. The original soil data came from the USDA, so I'm going to click Add. And I'm going to right click on this and go to Open Attribute Table. So pretty much everything that we've downloaded thus far, except for that 2010 tile stuff, was vector type data, I mean raster type data. The soils information and the 2010 tiles information is actually vector data, they're polygons. So we have an attribute table and our polygons has data behind it. And we can see here that this is a pretty complete table. It has everything that we need here. All of those categories that we saw on the web soil survey is also here. Most of it is anyway. So right now we're seeing the soils as being all blue. Let's just say that we want to be able to view this a lot more easier. So what we can do is we can change the symbology. So I'm going to right click on the soils and go to properties. I'm going to scoot this over to the left. Go to symbology. And I'm going to choose categories. And when we opened up the attribute table, we had several columns. So I'm going to pick which column that I want to start to symbolize. I'm going to choose new name. And I'll choose maybe something like this and click add all values and then click apply. And then it goes through and it changes the symbology of all of our soils. So we can actually use this identify tool. And our tile here is selected, so we need to click this drop down and choose soils. Now we can actually choose the soil area. So those are all of those columns that we saw in our attribute table. So let me open our attribute table again. So we had FID, shape, area, symbol. That's all of this stuff up here across the top that we see again here. So this is pretty useful for us. And we can go in here and re-symbolize this to represent different aspects of our soil. Maybe we want to instead do depth to restrictive layer instead. 
So we can right click on this and go to properties. And this time we want to symbolize depth to restrictive layer. Maybe we'll use lithic bedrock. And maybe we'll use this um, red to green at all values. So red being very shallow and it didn't color ramp that very well. So I'm just going to click apply and click OK. And most of what we have here is green. Of course it doesn't really match what we had on the other site on the web soil survey because it's doing it for the entire county of Riley. So one of the things that we'll need to do here pretty soon is we need to clip our data down to our area of interest so it's not having to do this for the entire county. So I'm going to go ahead, go back in here and change the symbology to soil type, which is our mu name. And I'm going to choose that one again. Apply. So we go back to something that looks more like soils. So thus far, I can pretty much tell you that this soil data is intact, it's not corrupted, there's nothing missing here. It's pretty thorough, it's more thorough than most soil data that we usually get. So I would say that we have some soil data here that is ready for the analysis phase.